Hello out there, world. If you are seeing me right now, please would you put something in the chat roll to say hello to everyone. Uh, tell us your name and where you're from. Um, this is the first time, uh, really exciting for me, that we're doing a webinar on, uh, on Facebook Live. Okay, David. Hi, David. So we are. We're live. This is wonderful. So this is the first time we've done a webinar um, uh, directing the feed straight through Facebook. So really cool for me. Uh, it's the first time, so forgive us if we're kind of bouncing back and forth, making sure things are working. But uh, if, you, uh, if you're joining the webinar, won't you just say hi in the chat roll? A couple of people have already done that. Uh, tell us where you're from. Tell us where you sell. And just say hi to everyone. Um, so for those of you who have never been on a webinar before, uh, the chat roll, the way it, it kind of works is, um, obviously, I don't get to read all the comments that are coming through as people are, are, are chatting, but I really want to encourage you guys to do that. So during the, the two hours or whatever it is we're going to be together, um, if you've got questions, if you've got things that you're not clear on, um, if you've just got comments, if you want to comment on something that somebody else has said, I really want to encourage you to do that. Uh, part of the, the magic of a webinar, uh, and actually it's, it's more um, interactive than if you were to drive to a hotel and be in the room live with me, um, this is actually more interactive because you guys get to talk to each other during the webinar, and I've got absolutely no problem with that. I want to encourage you to do it, in fact. And uh, because we're doing this webinar from private properties offices in Durban, we've got a whole team of the private property guys here on the webinar with us. And in fact, what they will do is they will also respond if you've got questions or you miss one of the links that I give you to one of the freebies or the giveaways, no problem. You can ask a question and we've got guys in the office here who are going to be responding to those questions. So a huge welcome to all of you. And, uh, and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Steve Johnston, and we're going to be talking about service excellence today, but there's a, a couple of things I want to cover with you before we, we get there. Um, so uh, I, what I wanted to do was I just wanted to read a couple of your, your feedback comments. So on the thank you page after you registered for the webinar, you, uh, there was this little, this little um, survey, and I, I just asked you the question, what is the single best service technique that you have used to create a great impression with your clients, because that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I just wanted to read a couple of, of these to you. Um, Dave Scott made a good comment. He said, uh, frequent client contact during the sales process and conveyancing. That's such a good comment. In fact, it's one of the six uh, little service secret techniques that I'm going to be sharing with you today is how and why we should maintain constant communication with our clients to keep them feeling at ease. So great. Well done, Dave. I think that's excellent. Um, Willem said, by knowing the property that you're selling, and then uh, a similar uh, answer by T. Var said, displaying knowledge in the field as a way of leveraging trust, uh, and then to be presentable and listening to requirements. This is another one of the huge things we're going to be talking about today is the, your ability to listen, your ability to find out what it is your clients and why they want it. Um, Rocco Duplessis said, honesty, uh, and absolutely, long term, if you want to make in this game, you cannot be a charlatan, you cannot be selling snake oil, and you cannot be in it for your own profit. You have to be in it for the benefit of other people, so I love that honesty. Um, Annalise Fick said, gifts, and that's great. We're going to be talking about the wise and intelligent use of gifting today, how do you do it in order to create long-term uh, memorable ref and you know referrals, etc. So, for you guys who filled in that little feedback form, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, a couple of other things uh, before I introduce, I'm going to introduce Greg Crowder to you uh, from Private Property. Just say how's it and, and to greet you on behalf of Private Property. I just want to thank them before I do that for hosting this event. Uh, you guys are all Private Property clients. And it's an amazing privilege for me to be working together with Private Property. They are such a great partner for my business, and I'm hugely grateful. So all of you guys in the room, thank you, and well done. Um, and then just before I ask Greg to come up and say how's it to you, I just want to tell you about where we're going later today, and then I want to give you those two freebies, because I did promise uh, those of you who joined the webinar today that you were going to get uh, two free products from my online school. Okay, so first thing I want to share with you, is uh, this little successful real estate agent seminar. At the end of today's webinar, I'm going to be 
uh, talking a little bit more about this. So I want to just give you a heads up in advance where we're going later today. Uh, there's going to be huge value in today. I'm going to teach you six service excellence little secret techniques that are going to make a dramatic impact in your business if you implement them. And then at the end of today, I'm going to tell you more about my flagship training course. So how is it that we are profitable as a business, as a training company? Well, our flagship training course is called The Successful Real Estate Agent. That is where I teach a, it takes me seven and a half hours to do it, but I teach a fully fledged referral generating system for estate agents. So it is, um, it's bespoke written for the real estate industry on how as an estate agent to generate referred leads. So if you sit on the webinar until the end, if you hang in there with me, I am going to offer you a massive discount on the uh, successful real estate agent course. Plus I'm going to throw in two free courses from my online school. Okay, so there is a very, very, very good deal waiting for you if you stay on till the end of the webinar today. Um, okay, the, the freebies. Now, what I'm going to do is open up the chat roll here. Okay, just give me a second. Just be patient with me just for a second while I do this. Uh, I am going to put in the chat roll a, a link to the free value items. And I promise this to you. So what is this? Uh, this is, uh, okay, now you should see it in the chat roll there under Agent Connect. Okay, this is a repository of over five years worth of high quality newsletter items that we had professionally written by professional copywriters and then professionally designed by a, a graphic designer that you can send there in PDF form. So what you'll do is when you click that link that I've just put in the chat roll, it's going to take you to a checkout page on my school, but you'll see it's a 100% discounted link. So you just go through the little process to register for that course, and it normally costs 5,000 Rand, um, and I'm going to give it to you for free for joining us on the webinar today. So I trust that that's a blessing to you. Then there's a second link I'm going to put in the, in the chat roll there, and that is for the Wildfire Service Excellence ebook. So there is a, an ebook version, and you should see that in there. There's an ebook version of the, the little webinar that we're going to be doing today. So if you don't catch it all today on the webinar, don't worry. Just download that ebook for free. I think it's normally 150 Rand or whatever on my school, but you're going to get that for free as well today. And you've got that, and you can read through it afterwards, you know, put it on your Kindle or on your computer or print it out or whatever. Okay, so trust that those two things are a blessing to you, and you can, even if you don't get to do it now, just scroll down in the chat roll at the end of the webinar and go and download those things. Right, that was the freebies. Uh, and then, yes, okay, last point, and then I'm going to ask Greg to come and say hi, is I want to encourage you to be kind to yourself today. What do I mean by that? About 25 years ago, a guy called Michael Gerber wrote a book called The E-Myth. And then he re-released it a few years later called The E-Myth Revisited. And one of the points he makes in that book is that one of the biggest errors uh, small business owners make is they spend all their time working in their business and they never take time out to work on their business. Now, I, don't, I hope that makes sense to you. But to work on your business means you work on your systems, you work on your procedures, you, you work on your strategies. It's, it's that whole thing where you stop chopping the tree for a second and you sharpen the axe. Now, the temptation might be, you know, wow, you're going to sit on this blooming webinar until 12 o'clock today with Stephen and, you know, it's like two hours out of the office and you're going to be tempted to be checking your phone during the webinar. You're going to be tempted to check your Facebook because you're actually sitting on Facebook as you watch this. And my strong encouragement to you is just be kind to yourself. Allow yourself the liberty to spend two hours with me. Because just because you're not working in your business, it does not mean you're not being productive because you are working on your business. You are sharpening your axe. So give yourself the liberty to switch the phone off. Don't go into your social media and just give me your attention for two hours. I promise you it'll be worth it in the long run. Okay, be kind to yourself. Okay, on that note, what I'm going to do is just uh, shut my slide presentation down so that you can see Greg, and uh, and Greg wants to come and say hi. 
How's it, guys? Thanks very much for joining us for another webinar. It's uh, great having Steve back again. This is the second time he's done one on Asian Connect for, for you guys. Um, we at Power Property are so passionate about making sure that our industry keeps getting better, keeps getting the right attention that it deserves, uh, and to try and help you guys service those end consumers as best as you possibly can. Um, we are so passionate and geared up on that, and that's why I think it's absolutely fantastic that so many of you have come here today and are watching right now, sharing the links. I see what you guys are doing, sharing and liking and what have you with everyone else in the industry. Uh, I, I, I'm so happy to see that. Half the battle is won that you have intention to even be here and taking time out of your day to come listen to Steve um, because service excellence is what our industry is all about. Um, if, we, if we cut through all of it, this is what we live and breathe. I know all of you out there in the field every single day just oozing it, and, but every now and again you do have to take a, a step out and sharpen your action, as, as Steve said. So enjoy the webinar. Um, we continue to put up more and more content for you guys. Uh, I know Steve's going to give you a fantastic go today. I've heard um, this talk that he does um, before, and you're in for a treat. Thanks a lot, and thanks, Steve. All right, Greg. Thanks so much. Huh? <clears throat> okay, awesome, guys. And if I could just ask you, as a way to say thank you to private property, because they do this at some expense, uh, just, just say a little thank you in the chat roll. I'm not actually looking at the chat roll, so I'm going to just trust that you do that. But please just give a big shout out to Greg and Sia in the office here who's worked so hard to put this together and just say thank you to them. Okay, good. I'm going to open up my slide presentation again and we are going to get into our presentation today. So just give me a second. Okay, so um, lots of testimonials. I tell you, I'm not going to read these. You know, they say <laughs> when you do webinars, you're supposed to read testimonials so that people know that you're not like a scam. There's lots of testimonials. I could show you hundreds of these things of, of, of emails that we've got out through the years of what our system has done for agents. I've put some of them in uh, the back of that manual. So hopefully you got an email from me yesterday saying how to download the little manual. And uh, I trust that you've gone and done that. And at the, at the back of that manual, there's all sorts of, of testimonials that I've included. Go and read through them if you have any doubts whatsoever. Okay, so hopefully you've printed out the manual. That's what it looked like. If you haven't, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going I'm to ask Sia to keep an eye on the chat roll. If lots of you don't have that manual, we can put a link uh, in it. I've got, I've got a Dropbox link that you, can, uh, that you can use to go and get it. So, in fact, let me do that. I'm going to put a Dropbox link to that in the in the in the uh, in the chat roll just give me a second okay I've got the link now I just need to put it in the, the chat roll here okay so that's a little Dropbox link for the manual for today so if you didn't do your homework and go and print the manual you can click that download it and print it uh, you might not want to print the front page because it's high color but anyway go ahead then uh, we're going to start on page one. One of the things, okay, let's give a shout to private property. I've done that. Uh, one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is, if you've got that manual in front of you, get a pen because there's missing words that we're going to be filling in as we go through. There's a number of reasons I do that. I'm not just being childish. Uh, one of the things it does is it helps you remain focused during the hour and a half or so that I'm going to be teaching. And uh, one of the other things it does is it gives you something that you've put some personal investment into to take away with you after the webinar as you still continue to think through and your mind is mulling over some of the things that we've spoken about. Okay, so first question I want to answer is why should we do a, um, a webinar on service excellence, you know? Um, well, it may seem like a silly question, but why should I do it in particular? Uh, because as, as many of you probably know, I specialize in teaching estate agents how to generate leads by referral. I mean, that's my area of speciality. And we've got the successful real estate agent course, seven hours on a referral generating system for estate agents. Okay, but here's the point. Having a steady stream of leads is one thing, which is what I teach you to do on my course. But then once you've generated those leads, knowing how to service those clients once you've been introduced to them is equally as important. And Research from our organization and lots of experience working with tens of thousands of agents as we have over the years has taught us that there are six major service excellence strategies, little secret keys you might call them, to providing the kind of service that your clients 
will appreciate to the extent that they will become long-term supporters of your business. Now, when I say long-term supporters of your business, what do I mean? Uh, two things. Long-term supporters of your business will use you repeatedly them themselves. So repeat business. And then long-term supporters of your business will refer you to their family and friends. So we're talking about repeat business and referral business. The experience that your clients have with you during the course of a transaction will have a huge impact on those two things long-term. Okay, that's why we are doing a webinar on service excellence. And I think the first missing word in your workbook says this. There is a huge difference between making a sale and creating an advocate. There's a huge difference between creating a sale, uh, making a sale, creating an advocate. Right, what is an advocate? Well, an advocate is someone who will be a champion for your business long term. Now, if you want to work exclusively by referral, which I strongly recommend to you as something you should be aiming to do, you have to do more than successfully help someone buy or sell their home. You have to transition them at the same time while you're working with them in this transaction from knowing you to quite liking you to trusting you. Now, on the board behind me, I'm just going to get up out of my seat just for a second. If you can't read the words on the board, don't, don't stress too much about it. I'm going to close the presentation so that you can see. Um, I just need to be careful of all the wires that I'm connected up to here. Okay, if you, don't, if, you don't, if you can't read these words, don't worry too much about it. But I just want to show you generally what I'm talking about. This is what I call the, the kind of the influence scale. On the left-hand side, we've got influence. Low influence is when people only know you. Then influence increases as people begin to like you. They actually enjoy being around you. And then the top level of influence, you have the most influence over people, is when people learn to trust you, when they understand that they can trust you, both from a, a, um, a character point of view and a competence aspect for, in real estate. Now, how do you transition someone from knowing you to liking you to trusting you so that you can have increasing influence over them? How do you do that? Well, short answer is there's no short answer. You have to take time. So on the bottom here, we have the passage of time. Relationships grow over time, correct? Trust is developed over time. Now, I want us to divide this timeline into two separate categories. We've got, we've got the one section of time here, which represents your mid-transaction. In other words, you meet someone, let's call her Mrs. Edwards, you list her property. You list Mrs. Edwards' property, you enter a transaction with her. Until that thing closes, you are in a transaction with Mrs. Edwards. Let's say it takes four months, six months, whatever. There is a job to be done within this four to six month period while you're in the transaction with her where you can, if you do it badly, by the end of that, you've barely gone from her knowing you to liking you. If you do it well, however, during this transaction, you can get the relationship way up here to trust already. Now, to stop for a second, that is what we're going to be doing on this webinar. How do you do that instead of that in the course of a transaction? Okay, but that's not where the job ends. Because the, the other huge question is, after the transaction, so these words here say post-transaction. After the transaction, how do you maintain that relationship and, and in fact keep, keep it moving up, keep the trust levels increasing, rather than the relationship just drops to the floor when the transaction is complete. I mean, can you see the huge difference between an, an agent who develops trust during the transaction and then has, now listen carefully, a referral system, a keep-in-touch system that runs in their business that continues to keep in touch with those clients long-term after the transaction is complete. Now, this here... This whole keep in touch system is what I teach on the successful real estate agent course. Now, that's the course I'm going to talk to you about at the end of my webinar, and you're going to have a decision to take whether you invest in that course or not. I think that is a helpful slide to get you um, 
to orientate yourself as to where we're going today. We're, we're focusing in this webinar here, and then my paid course looks at the long-term keep in touch system. Okay. Uh, hope that made sense. If that made sense, don't you want to just say something in the chat roll and say, that made sense to me. I'm going to just open up my slides again. And we're going to continue through the manual together. Okay, so, Sia, do we have people talking in the chat roll? Okay, excellent. Right, so we're going we're gonna to be not just making a sale, we're going to be creating an advocate. How do you do that? You transition them from knowing you to liking you to trusting you. There is a relational job to be done during the, the course of a transaction. And if you do that relational job right, you will not only make a sale, but you will create an advocate who will potentially refer you to many more clients in the future. So here's the bottom line. Providing exceptional customer service is good for your business. Okay, I hope you believe that. All right, there are six little techniques, little secret keys, like uh, service imperatives, we might call them, that we're going to be doing together on this webinar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the six now in advance, and then we're going to spend the rest of our time together going through the six one by one. Okay, so here they are, and you can uh, fill these in in your manual. I think you've got, yeah, I think you've got the missing words there. So the first one is, You've got to communicate understanding of your client's emotions. Okay, that's number one. Communicate understanding of your client's emotions. Number two, you've got to be flexible during the course of that transaction. Okay, you've got to show. Number three, you've got to wow your client little touches of service throughout the transaction, okay, you've got it, and I'm going to teach you how to do that systematically in your business, very, very good discussion we have on that one, fourthly, you've got to give your clients your undivided attention, your undivided attention, <clears throat> uh, number five, you've got to keep the experience pleasant at all times, and I know some of you are thinking, man, that's difficult, well, you've got to do it. You've got to work hard to keep it pleasant, even when things get difficult and tricky and difficult discussions have to be had. And then number six is you've got to maintain constant communication throughout the transaction, which is why I like Dave Scott, I think it was. Yeah, which is why I like Dave's comment so much on that feedback survey, because he said exactly that. Maintaining constant communication is key to transitioning people from knowing you to liking you to trusting you. Okay, so again, just orientate yourself. What are we doing? These are the six research-proven ways in which you can, during the course of a transaction, transition someone from knowing you to quite liking you to trusting you by the end of the transaction. These six things. So let's go through them one at a time. Technique number one is communicating understanding of your client's emotions. Now, do you know what the fundamental difference between a good salesperson and a bad salesperson is. Okay, so here's what I want to suggest to you, and this is in your workbook. Bad salespeople try to coerce others to make decisions that they don't want to make, while good salespeople help people make decisions that they do want or need to make. Okay, so bad salespeople never listen. Now, are you hearing me? I hope so, because bad salespeople never listen. They think that the more information that they give, the more likely they are to make a sale. Now, just, just think about that comment for a, for a second. A bad salesperson has got their thing that they want you to buy. And they're not interested in listening to you and finding out what you need or what you want. They just want to sell you their thing. And in order to sell you their thing, the, the approach that they take is, is, is not to listen, but it's to talk. They just tell you as much as they can about their product, hoping that sooner or later they're going to hit some hot button of something that you do want, and then you're going to buy this thing from Okay. <laughs> if you think you're stressed, <laughs> if 
You should see what things look like here. Um, so, guys, hopefully you can now log in. What we've done is just gone straight to Facebook, straight to the Facebook page, and, we, and we've actually skipped the, the webinar software which we were using. So hopefully this resolves the problem. But if I am back up and you can see me, please, for the love of all that is good, just put a comment in the chat roll and tell us that... <laughs> Okay, and tell us that you still love us and, and that you haven't lost patience. Okay, great. I can see people are, 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 in the, are in the chat roll. Okay, awesome, guys. Thank you so much for your patience with us. And I tell you, I'm, I'm not quite sure where it dropped, so I'm going to just start from the beginning of point number one, uh, technique number one, which is communicating understanding of your client's emotions. Um, so the one thing we're not going to have is um, slides, uh, which is fine. The slides are just augmenting anyway. You've got the little workbook which you can download. Uh, uh, by the way, let me actually do this. If you have not downloaded the webinar workbook, um, I'm going to put a, a, a Dropbox link for you in the chat roll. Okay, it's coming in right now from Agent Connect. Okay, just click on that link. And it'll take you to that the, the, the manual on Dropbox. Download it. Uh, even if you want to go, to, you know, follow with me on your computer, or if you want to print it out quickly and have it with you. So, in the absence of the slides, that'll just make a little bit of a difference if you've got the little manual. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, people are people are apparently still connecting. So we're gonna just uh, we're just gonna waffle a bit. I'll tell you what. Tell us in the in the chat roll. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat roll here. Just tell us where you are. Uh, tell us where you where you work. And why don't you make a comment on the state of the market at the moment? Uh, I've got some opinions on the state of the market, not not scientific, but anecdotal. I've kind of been chatting to agents as I as I travel. And uh, yeah, okay. I've got some I've got I've got some technical help on my right hand side here. Um, I've got uh, yeah, I've got some opinions on the state of the market. I. Well, let me not tell you. I'd like to see in the chat roll what you guys think the market is doing at the moment and uh, and how life as an estate agent is. Um, I'd also like to see a comment or two from agents who have um, – okay, just uh, do me a favor. If you, can, if you can see me and you can hear me, just put a comment in the chat roll saying that the video and the sound feed are all good. Uh, that'll just allay some of our fears that we are coming through loud and clear. Um, I'd like to see how many of you guys have been in the industry for longer than 10 years. So you managed to navigate 2008 and 2009. Actually, looking back, the huge hit to the real estate industry was mid-2007 when the National Credit Act was passed. And that just started that whole cycle of things. And then the global economic crisis in 2008 and interest rates, it's something like I don't know, 18 interest rate hikes in a row uh, or, or seven in a row over 18 months or something. I just remember there was a seven and an 18 involved. But uh, it was hugely traumatic at the time. And I'd, I'd just be interested to see how you guys would compare what we went through 10 years ago to kind of what we have been through as a country and are going through at the moment and what the, how, how you think the market is reacting. I'd love to see some comments on that. So Sonia says, uh, the cheaper houses are selling like hot potatoes. The expensive houses are not selling. Um, working in properties from age 23, now 52. So you've been in almost 30 years, Sonia. Well done. Well done. Excellent. So you've seen the ups and the downs, and you're still in it. Um, okay, so guys, just uh, I'm seeing a couple of uh, comments saying sound is good, video is good. And do I have a green light to continue? Are people still joining? Can I hit it? Okay. Guys, thank you so much for your patience. Um, technical hitches, you know how it goes. So what we're talking about is the six service excellence techniques to transition people from knowing you to liking you to trusting you. And uh, number one is communicating understanding of your client's emotions. And I was saying to you that a bad salesperson is someone who just doesn't listen. They just want to give you information so that you'll buy from them. But actually, that's not how you create advocates. And I was telling a little story of how um, <clears throat> my wife's name is Danielle. When Danielle and I were buying a new car many years ago when we just had small kids, uh, we went down to Renault and we were met there by Bernie, the Renault salesman. And Danielle had organized a test drive with old Bernie. And Bernie was very keen to get us into the car, like no small talk whatsoever. 
uh, firm handshake and then come this way, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. And he put us in the car. And uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm exaggerating. It's, it's from the time I met Bernie on the showroom floor uh, through our time on the test drive through our time back at the showroom floor where we listened to Bernie some more, um, I don't think I am exaggerating when I say I didn't say one word, not one word. Bernie just talked and talked and talked and talked. And um, when he was finished talking, just to be sure, you know, that he got everything out there, he, he talked some more. And bless old Bernie's heart, he'd, he'd obviously recently been on the Renault Scenic Info course for the salesman. And uh, he was keen to deliver, via regurgitation, uh, every possible fact about the Renault Scenic that he could remember. And boy, I mean, he really gave it everything he had. Now, if you've ever done any kind of sales training, uh, maybe as an estate agent, or maybe you were in another industry where you were a salesperson, this is standard sales training. They would have told you this. Don't sell features sell what well, somebody in the comment section just what, how do they finish that sentence when sales trainers tell you don't sell features sell I want, maybe it's a bit of a lag or maybe nobody knows but the answer is I'm, I'm, I'm sure i'm going to see this come through in a second don't sell features sell benefits yeah so the idea there is you you don't say to a client um this house has high ceilings that's a feature right What's, what's the benefit? Yeah, I see all the benefit comments are coming through now. So you don't say this house has high ceilings. You say this house has high ceilings, which means it will stay cool in summer. Okay, so the way you get from features to benefits is by using the words which means. You know, the only problem with this advice is that it doesn't work. Now, why do I say that? Because that is not the best way to make a sale, and it is certainly not the best way to create an advocate. The only features and benefits which a salesperson should be telling the client about are those which the client is interested in. And how are you su uh, supposed to find out what a client is interested in? Well, obviously, you have to ask questions and listen to them. And you see, this was Bernie's great error. Uh, you know, many uh, memory is a funny thing. As you, as you get older and you sort of hearken back to events in the past, you don't remember them like crystal clear. Um, but in my mind, I can still see Bernie and his mouth moving. But all I can actually hear is just blah, 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 Mr. Johnson, blah, 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 and all this information. But then there's the sudden break in the clouds of my memory. And to this day, I can still hear Bernie say this. And Mr. Johnston, something else about this car is that there is titanium in the windscreen, which means that you won't get sunburnt while you drive the car. And then my memory goes straight back to blah, 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 blah. Now, for some reason, my brain retained that one sentence, but not for the reason that Bernie would have liked. And I think I do recall that that unbelievable piece of salesmanship because I remember thinking to myself, Bernie, that is the most unbelievably arbitrary piece of information that any human being has ever has ever given me. And I remember thinking, Bernie, I have absolutely no interest whatsoever in not having my arms burn through this window. In fact, Bernie, most of the time I drive with my arm hanging out the window, you know, to get fresh air. Like I have no interest in titanium on the windscreen to not get sunburned. Bernie, why on earth are you telling me that? And in fact, I was thinking to myself, Bernie, I know why you told me that. Because you don't care about what I want. All you care about is making a sale. And so you're just vomiting all this information over me. Just, Bernie, just stop. Stop, Bernie, because you know what? I don't trust you anymore. That was all going on in my head, but I'm just sitting there very quietly, you know. But you see, in Bernie's defense, he was only doing what the sales training manual had told him to do, right? He wasn't selling features. He was selling benefits. He even used those magic words, which means. So he, he had been listing feature followed by benefits for 20 minutes when he finally came to feature, Mr. Johnston, there's titanium on the windscreen, benefit, which means you won't get sunburned <laughs> through the windscreen. Well, well done, Bernie. You know, round of applause, Bernie. He did what the sales training manual told him.
to do. Only problem was, of course, that Bernie was trying to get me to buy something that I didn't want. It smacked of insincerity. He didn't care what we wanted. He didn't care what was important to us. He was only interested in selling us what he had so that he could make a buck. Good salespeople, on the other hand, listen to their clients. See, Bernie didn't ask us any questions. He just vomited information on us. The first thing a good salesperson does is ask questions because a good salesperson is trying to help people make decisions that they do want or need to make. A good salesperson is an empowerer of others, not a convincer of others. I hope that you hear that. There is this massive misunderstanding globally around what a salesperson is. A salesperson is not someone who can convince others, well, you can sell ice to Eskimos. That's ridiculous. A salesperson is someone who genuinely understands the wants and needs of others and then empowers them in the process of getting what they want. It's a heart matter. You know, to me, this thing is about the heart. It's about your intentions with clients, even if it means not making a sale to them. Find out what they want, find out why they want it. Um, you know, and when good salespeople ask questions, they then listen actively. They listen for certain cues. And I'm going to suggest to you now, this is the next little technique here. When you ask questions, so here's a good question, by the way. What's important to you about dot, dot, dot? Complete the sentence for whatever you're, whether you're working with a buyer or a seller. What, Mr. Mrs. Edwards, what is important to you about selling your home? You know, don't assume you know the answer to that question. Let her speak. Um, right, now when she answers, I'm going to suggest to you that you're listening for not just anything, you're listening for emotional cues, okay? You're listening for emotional wants and needs. You want to hear Mrs. Edwards say something emotional in answer to that question. Which Tech number are you on? How do I find that out? On oh, oh, what page number? Oh, I don't actually know. Um, it's not a very long manual, guys. You can just scroll through it and find me. I'm, I'm under um, heading number one, chapter number one, which says service excellence imperative number one, communicate understanding of your client's emotions. It's got to be page one or two of the manual. So we're right up front. We're still on the first of the six techniques. Okay, so if you're trying to orientate yourself in the manual, that's where we are. Okay, Desmond, thank you. Desmond says we're on page two. Very helpful, Desmond, thank you. Right, where on earth was I, people? I was talking about emotional wants. <laughs> Something I'm stuck. I was in the mid, some very passionate sentence about emotional wants. So, oh yes, listen for emotional cues. That's what, what top sales people do. They ask a lot of questions and then they listen carefully enough to know what is truly important to the prospect, what, is, what touches their emotions. Okay. Once you know people's emotional drive behind a transaction, you can then meet that emotion with logical solutions. Okay. Logic does play a part in sales, but the emotion underpins the logic. Now, if Bernie, the Reno salesman, if he had taken any time at all to just ask one simple question of Danielle and me, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, what is important to you about buying a new car? You know, he would have found out pretty quickly that the reason I was at Renault and not anywhere else at the time was that their cars had a great reputation at the time for safety. And this particular vehicle had the right amount of space for my growing family. Okay, safety and space. Those were two, my two driving factors in buying a new car. And what Bernie should have done was he, he then should have told me predominantly about the features and benefits relating to those two needs, safety and space. And then he could have woven into his whole discussion about safety how that would have made me feel knowing that my wife was driving my kids around in the car that won the European five-star best safest car in the world award at the time, that Mr. Johnson, that'll give you total peace of mind as Danielle is driving the kids to and from school. And, you know, that's how you link the emotional wants and needs with logical solutions, helping people get what they want. That's what Bernie should have done. 
But instead, what did Bernie do? He told me about the bloody titanium and the windscreen so that I didn't get sun. I mean, it's, that is a great illustration of the difference between a good and a bad salesperson. Um, once in one of my uh, seminars many, many years ago, um, an agent was getting really excited as we were speaking about this particular principle. And he interrupted me. If I remember correctly, his name was Paul. And he said, uh, he said, this is incredible. He said, I am busy trying to find a house for a Scottish couple, and she wants a big kitchen. So what I'm going to do this Saturday, because I'm doing a little viewing of our house, instead of marching them through the house and showing them everything, I'm just going to take them straight into the kitchen. I'm going to hop up on the counter, and I'm going to make small talk while she enjoys the sea view, I remember him saying. And I said to him, that's good thinking, Paul. I like it. You're heading in the right direction there. But can I ask you a question? Why does she want a big kitchen? And there was silence. You see, he, he like sort of scratched his head for a second, and hopefully the penny dropped. See, he didn't know why she wanted a big kitchen. Now, I couldn't have scripted it better. At that moment, another lady in the audience, she jumped up and she said, I know why she wants a big kitchen. And then I, as soon as she said that, I, I interrupted and I said, ma'am, I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but do you realize you are about to make the mistake that I'm talking about? And she said, that a bit confused. She said, no, I'm not. Listen, every woman wants a big, and I interrupted her again. And I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry to interrupt you twice in a row, but you are making the very mistake that I am trying to teach you about. Now, in the chat roll, you tell me, what is the mistake that that woman was making? Why do I say she was making the mistake that I'm talking about now when she said, I know why every woman wants a big kitchen. What's the mistake she's making there? Because if, if you can understand this, it's going to open up the most incredible little service technique, this little secret technique that is so easy to do and yet so powerful for creating long-term advocates. It's going to open up a whole new world of service excellence for you if you get this. Okay, I'm seeing lots of comments come through, and you guys are all right. Assumption. Assumption is the enemy of creating advocates. Now, just stay with me, okay? This is a slightly deeper thought than just Bernie the Reno salesman. Assuming to know why people want what they want and, and why they want, not just what they want, why they want it is a huge mistake. There are two problems with assuming to know why people want what they want. Okay, first problem with it, this is the most obvious one, is you might assume incorrectly. I said to this lady, you know, you might have no idea. The truth be told is you don't know why this woman wants a big kitchen. You don't know their story. You don't know their life. They might really love tango dancing. And when they got married 40 years ago, the, the only house they could afford of their, of their own was this tiny little one-bedroom rented apartment in Glasgow in Scotland, which is freezing in the winter. And the only warm room in the house was the kitchen, and they might have had an absolutely minute kitchen, and one day as they were huddled together in front of the stove, the husband might have made this promise to his, like his new Scottish bride in this broad Scots accent, which I'm going to completely mess up, but he might have said to her, one day when we can afford it, my bonnie lass, we're not going to live in a wee hoose. You know what a wee hoose is? A wee, <laughs> wee hoose is a small house. He said, I'm not going to, I'm going to buy you a hoose with an absolutely enormous kitchen, me bonnie lass, and we're going to do the tango in it. You know, I said, you've got no idea why this woman wants a big kitchen. You don't know their story. Most purchasing decisions are taken on emotion, right? I mean, as an estate agent, you know that's especially true of people buying or selling a home. There is so much emotion invested in people's homes. Logic and facts come second. I'm not saying that people don't crunch the numbers and that people don't make sensible decisions. They do. Okay, Most people do. But what I'm saying is if you want to create advocates, long-term advocates in your business, is you have to understand the emotion behind your client's transactions. And unless you do that, you will never transition people from knowing you to liking you to trusting you and working by referral long-term. 
Now, that, that's the first reason. I said you might assume incorrectly. What's the second reason you never assume? Now, now you have to listen carefully to this, okay? You, you, you should never assume to know people's motives because they have to feel as if they have had a chance to express these emotions and desires to you in such a way that you understand them. Okay, so here is an absolutely key principle at the end of a transaction, and this is one of the big red blocks in your manual. It is not enough for you to know what your clients want, number one. It's not enough for you to know what they want. Okay, they want a big kitchen. Now, fine, Paul knew that. He knew they wanted a big kitchen, but that wasn't enough, was it? Second principle, it's not even enough for you to know why your clients want what they want. So even if Paul had, like a little bird had told him that the Scottish couple love tango dancing and all of that, even that's not enough. And now listen to this, this last statement in the red block. Your clients must know. They must know that you knew what they wanted and why. Okay, do you get it? They must know that you knew and why. Okay, and, and in your workbook, here's the missing word. Everybody wants to feel understood. Everybody wants to feel understood. If you want to earn someone's trust, you have to get them to feel like you understand them. And, and, you, and you care for the things they care for. That's what trust is. So there's two steps. If you want to get your clients to feel like you understand them, two steps, okay? Find out what they want and why they want it. Now, how do you do that? You've got to ask them questions. You can't be Bernie the inner salesman. You've got to ask what's important to you about this transaction and then listen, ask questions and listen and do yourself a favor. If you are one of those people prone to interrupting, prone to a rapid train of thought that comes out of your mouth. When you are asking people questions about what they want and why, you need to be quiet. You need to let them talk and you need to peel the layers of the onion back. And why is that important to you? Tell me more about that. Let them talk. Okay, that's step number one. Step number two is when your client is finished, you need to mirror her emotions back to her. Okay, so, Mrs. Edwards, if I understand you correctly, one of the things that you're wanting is a home with a garden where there's a lot of sunlight because your six-year-old daughter loves playing outside and you want her to be able to have a, a warm, beautiful, peaceful space where she can do just that. Am I, am I right? Okay, I've just mirrored some emotions back to Mrs. Edwards that she's expressed to me and now she feels like, yes, you actually understand what I want and why I want it. Most bad salespeople wouldn't have even heard Mrs. Edwards speak about her daughter. They'd be too busy trying to bloody show her the carport and the brass taps in the bathroom and the itch, you know, large sink in, in, in the scullery. So you ask questions, you listen, then how do you mirror back their emotions? Here's another little absolutely golden tip for you that will create raving fans. Okay, this is another block in your workbook there. When concluding a transaction, Use a handwritten personal note. Use a handwritten personal note. Right? And I speak lots about personal notes in the Successful Real Estate Agent course. I show you how to use them in a broader sense as, as tools in your business. But here's one little way you can use them. At the end of a transaction, you send a handwritten note together with a relevant gift as a way to demonstrate to the client that you understood her emotions. Okay, so I think the best way for me to kind of expound on that is, is, to, is to give you an illustration using maybe some of the examples we've been using. So for Mrs. Edwards, she wanted the sunny garden for her daughter. Maybe that little gift would be two floral hats that you leave in the home on the, the day they move in, um, one for her, one for her daughter, obviously, together with a, a little handwritten note that just says, congrats on your new home, Mrs. Edwards. You and Annie are going to spend so much quality time together in this beautiful garden, and I thought that these hats would come in handy. Stephen, what have you just done there? You see, now she knows that you knew. 
She knows that you understood and that you cared. And I'm telling you this, she will refer you until the cows come home. Okay? If you have a keep in touch system to maintain that relationship long term, that's what I teach on the Successful Real Estate Agent Seminar. Okay, so let's take another example for uh, Paul and his clients, his Scottish, the, the Scottish tango dancing thing. Maybe that would have mean, you know, Paul goes out and he buys a cheap little portable CD player. He gets a tango music CD. He puts it in and he leaves the tango music playing gently in the kitchen, like on, on the kitchen counter um, as he hands over the keys. And there's this little note leaning up against the, the CD player that just says, congrats on your new home, Mr. and Mrs. McDermott. May this kitchen be filled with music and dancing and with many fond memories of those days in Glasgow. See, Paul didn't just sell a home there. He fulfilled a lifelong dream. And what is more, he created an advocate. All right, that's number one. Now, I said, uh, I, I didn't say this to you earlier, but number one was the most important of the six. So I've taken... I'm going to still have you out of here by 12 o'clock, don't worry, even though despite the technical challenges. I took the most time on that first principle because I think it is the most powerful of the six, and I trust that you found some benefit in it. And, and I want to challenge you. Go and do this with, with a couple of your, your current clients. Drill down deeper to try to get to the emotion behind the transaction and then, and then mirror it back to them with a handwritten note and a gift, a relevant gift at the end of the transaction and see what it does for you. Okay. Uh, then we're on to number two. So this will be on the next page of the manual is be flexible. You've got to show your clients that you're willing to try. Um, bad salespeople, and here's the missing word, it, bad salespeople are inflexible to their clients' needs. Good salespeople, on the other hand, are willing to listen and will try to meet the client's needs within certain uncontrollable boundaries. Okay, so what I mean by that is you can't give people everything that they want because, I mean, sometimes people are unreasonable with you, but you've got to at least demonstrate to them that you are willing to try. If you want to create advocates, you have to give your clients the genuine impression during the transaction that you are willing to try to give them what they want, even if it is a little unreasonable. Now, this reminds me of uh, an old movie some of you may have seen. It was called Falling Down. Um, it had Michael Douglas in it. <clears throat> and in that movie, Michael Douglas plays this like Joe Public kind of average working class guy who's just lost his job. He's just been retrenched. And, and he was treated in this really cold manner. And it's just like he's just a statistic. And he's getting sick of the kind of impersonal, loveless, unkind nature of the world. It's just kind of worn him down. And there's this really great scene in the beginning of the movie. He goes into this fast food restaurant and he asks the girl behind the counter, could I have some breakfast, please? I'm sorry, sir, comes the reply. And it's this sort of tremendously re rehearsed smile on her face. We stopped serving breakfast at 11. You'll have to order something off the lunch menu. So, um, Michael Douglas looks back at her and he says, well, yeah, I, I, I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. So with the same sort of Colgate smile that she obviously learned in the little training course that she did, she said, yeah, well, that's too bad because we're not serving breakfast anymore. So he, he, he leans forward and he, he says to her, uh, is that the uh, manager? And she gives him this like, sassy look and... <laughs> She says, yeah. So he, he leans over the counter and he says, could you call him for me, please? So she turns to the manager and she calls in the most cheerful tone. She says, Rick, there's a customer that would like to speak with you. <laughs> so Rick comes over and uh, he's the most nerdy looking guy. He's, he's, got, he's got the clipboard under his arm. It's like the system, you know. He's the system guy. And he, he walks up with the clipboard. And he is the epitome of everything that Michael Douglas's character in this movie is sick of. The inflexible, unloving, impersonal system. So, so Rick says, yes, sir, with kind of this half-fake smile. Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, and Michael Douglas says, well, uh, uh, 
Uh, Rick, is that your name, Rick? Rick, I'd like to order some breakfast, please. And this obviously doesn't fit very well with Rick's system. So uh, he repeated the words that the girl had originally said, because they came straight out of the training manual. I'm sorry, sir, we stopped serving breakfast at 11. You'll have to order something off the lunch menu. So um, Michael Douglas looks at his watch, and it's like 11.03 or some, you know, ridiculously close time to 11 o'clock. And he, he looks back at Rick, and he says, Rick, have you ever heard the phrase, the customer's always right? And Rick kind of looks, says, yeah. And Michael Douglas says, well, here I am, the customer. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Rick is undaunted. He, he then says, well, yeah, that's, that's not our policy. Um, you know, he's kind of undaunted by this because the system has to stay what the system is. Um, and, and he says, I'm, I'm really sorry. And then at that point, Michael Douglas says, yeah, well, I'm really sorry too. And he pulls a machine gun out of this tog bag and he's just not blowing. He actually doesn't start shooting immediately. He gets as much of a fright at what he's done as everybody else. And he's got this thing and people are screaming and diving undercover and, and Rick's flipboard goes flying. It's, it's this really hilarious scene that actually ensues. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a scene which I think every salesperson should go and watch. In fact, you can, you can go and get it on YouTube. Just say falling down fast food restaurant scene and go and watch it on YouTube. Because we can all make people feel like that as salespeople. How many times have you been asked by a client to do something that was completely unreasonable? And in response, they ask you to do this unreasonable thing, you hear these words coming out of your mouth. No, unfortunately, that won't be possible, I'm sorry. You know, as if the word unfortunately somehow makes up for our unwillingness to try. You know, if you want to destroy an advocate, if you want to destroy the trust of someone, just say no to them immediately when they ask you to do something. Now, you can say no, but don't do it immediately. That's the little secret here. So <clears throat> I want to teach you some absolutely magic words which every salespeople should memorize. And you use these words when you are, you're about to hear yourself say, no, we can't do that. Instead, I want these words to pop out your mouth. Here's what you say. Let me see what I can do. You got it. Let me see what I can do. Yeah, so the next time someone asks you to do something completely ridiculous, like, uh, you know, we've only got so much cash. Uh, would you mind halving your commission so that we can make this deal work? You know, instead of breaking out into uncontrollable laughter, uh, followed by reaching for your machine gun, just say this. Hmm. That's, um, that's, a, that's a creative solution. Um, I tell you what, I'd like to crunch some numbers. Uh, give me a day or two and, and let me see what I can do. You see, what that does is it disarms the tension of the moment and it makes them feel like, well, gee, I mean, I wasn't actually expecting that. And this person's at least willing to go and try. You know, then you come back a day or two later and you say, um, I've been thinking about that this, this transaction and how we can make this thing work. And you ask me to have a look at reduce, uh, re reducing my commission. I crunched some numbers, I spoke to um, the management at, at the office, and it, it turns out that that's not actually going to be a possibility here, but there's something that I would like to suggest. And then you offer another solution. You know, what you've done is, put it this way, what would have happened if instead of just saying, I'm sorry, sir, we stopped serving breakfast at 11, when Michael Douglas had asked for breakfast, if she had just said, um, sir, we normally stop serving breakfast at 11, but I'll tell you what, if you don't mind just waiting a minute, let me go back into the kitchen and see what I can do. And if she'd gone back into the back of the kitchen and she hadn't even spoken to anyone, she just sat there for a minute and then come back and said, sir, I'm so sorry about this. I spoke with the head of the kitchen and unfortunately they've packed all the breakfast stuff away. And, you know, if you're happy to wait kind of 25 to 30 minutes, maybe they can find a gap to, 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 to like cook you some breakfast. And, you know, otherwise, are you sure there's nothing on the lunch menu that you wouldn't mind? You know, he wouldn't have pulled out his machine gun, that's for sure. The issue wasn't that he couldn't have breakfast. The issue was that no one cares. No one cares enough to try. Um, and in fact, in the hilarious scene which follows after that, he, by mistake, he pulls the trigger. It's got like a hair trigger, and, and he shoots off the roof out, and people are screaming. And he, and he gets all nervous. And, and as part of that, he, he says, Rick, uh, Rick, uh, I've, I've changed my mind. I, I, I think I will have some lunch. <laughs> 
So clients don't expect you to give them everything that they want. Okay, people are intelligent. They know they're being unreasonable when they are, but they do expect you to try. And if you don't try, you can forget about ever getting any referrals from them. Okay, that's principle number two. So express a willingness to try. Next one. Uh, so this is number three of the six. You got to wow your clients with little touches of service throughout the transaction. Now understand that the biggest reason your clients will refer you is that you provide them with exceptional service. Okay, that's the reason clients will, will refer you. You can have the best keep in touch system and I can teach you the, the world's best keep in touch system for real estate agents, which I teach on a successful real estate agent seminar. But if you've given bum service to a client, they're never gonna refer you. Okay, that is true. However, uh, without that long-term keep in touch system, it's not gonna work either. You've gotta have both things in play. In your workbook, understand this principle. Making an impression that will last five or more years is not difficult, nor is it expensive. Okay, now, I'd like you to think about, so for those of you who've bought your own home more than five years ago, so if, that, if, you, if that's you, I've got a little question for you. Um, who was the agent that sold you your house over five years ago, and do you remember, remember him or her and do you remember anything outstanding about that agent that they did by way of customer service so i'd love to see some comments in the chat roll around what it is that you remember that agent doing one little service technique one little thing that was kind of unexpected that they did that you that left an impression on you Okay, and I've done this enough times, you guys can keep watching the chat roll, I'm going to tell you what you're going to start seeing. It is going to be easy, insignificant, inexpensive things to do. Right? And, and, and actually what it turns out is that only 10% of agents in, in any kind of seminar, if I'm in a live room, I've got 500 agents in front of me, only kind of 30, 40 or 50 agents raise their hands to say, I can remember the agent. From, from five years ago. It turns out that kind of 90% of estate agents are unmemorable. They're just not memorable. And if you can remember something, it's going to be something that is both unexpected and unnecessary. Now, those are the two words in, in, the, in the workbook on the next little uh, red block there. People remember anything that is unexpected and unnecessary. Okay, so I'm going to suggest a little exercise to you. And if you guys are in a group, the, the other thing, actually, um, Greg asked me to ask this of you guys. I'd love to know this. How many of you are sitting in an office right now with multiple agents watching on the same screen? Uh, don't you want to just put that in the chat roll? Just put a number of how many people are watching together with you, because we can see how many individual, uh, you know, users are online. But uh, we know for many of you, there's maybe 20 or 30 agents in the room watching that. So please put that in the chat roll. We'd love to know the answer to, to that. Um, okay, so I'm, here's the exercise I'm going to suggest that you do. Make a long list of the normal stages of a transaction, okay, what we call a transaction timeline. In fact, I've written this thing up on the, the board behind me here. Okay, so make a transaction timeline. <clears throat> Very start of the transaction, when you uh, generate the lead initially, and perhaps when you, let's say when you sign the sole mandate. In fact, you can do it even before. Start it at the mandate presentation if you're working with a seller. You can do one for buyers as well. So a mandate presentation here. And then <clears throat> all, of the, all of the little stages in this transaction, all right the way through to the day they move into the property or the buyer moves in and then the, the, the seller gets their money and the transaction is now finished. There are a thousand little, little moments that you can mark along the way here. So the listing presentation, um, maybe a follow-up appointment, then maybe the signed sole mandate, then you agree on a marketing plan, then the first advert goes on private property, and then the first show house, and then, you know, an, op an offer to purchase, and then the bond gets really, I mean, the whole list okay do this now if you're a team if you work in an office i strongly recommend you do this as a team get your office together and brainstorm what i'm about to tell you to do it is such a powerful exercise what you do at every single one of the stages of this transaction 
is you brainstorm one, two, three service ideas that are unexpected and unnecessary that you implement at this stage of the transaction. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to get you to do all of them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to choose like the three best ones and you're going to implement those. But this, at this stage of the exercise, it's just a brainstorming exercise. And different people in the office will have different ideas. So you'll end up with three ideas for, let's say, the first show house. You, uh, you know, at the first show house, you buy movie tickets for the, for, the, for the family. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you fill the house with flowers for the first show house. And number three, some other idea. Come up with three ideas for every moment. Okay, so you'll end up with 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 service ideas. Then, <clears throat> on your own or if you're a team, look through all the service ideas that you've brainstormed and pick the top three. That's all. Just pick the top three. And then you do that thing every single time. So let's say uh, you chose that one. Every single show house you do from now until you leave the industry, you, that becomes a system in your business. You fill the first show house with flowers. Okay, I believe in systems because systems make things consistent. And if you consistently have three things that are unnecessary and unexpected, I'm telling you now, every single one of your clients will remember you in 10, 20, 50, you know, 10 15, 20 years' time. Something which most estate agents don't get right. Most estate agents are not memorable. Here is a systemic way of, of, of becoming memorable. Okay? I hope you take me up on that suggestion. It is a great, a, a great technique. Okay. Um, then, one last principle. I think this is in your workbook as well. Once you have made your wow impression, the worst thing you can do is then not keep in touch after the transaction. You know, if you do the stuff I'm telling you to do, you communicate understanding of their emotions, you wow them with little touches of service throughout the transaction, you're flexible, they, they know that you care. If you do those things and then the transaction ends and you don't then keep in touch with that person long term, you have squandered, I mean, literally millions of rands worth of income over the next 20 years that would come through that person. You must have a keep in touch system. Again, this is what I want to teach you on the Successful Real Estate Agent Seminar. That's what it is designed to do, to teach you how to keep in touch with various touch types. And there's a cycle of different types of touches you have with them and how many touches you need to have in a year. We know the whole research and science around it, okay? How to keep in touch with people after a transaction. I'm going to teach that to you if you purchase the course. Okay, number four. So we've done three of the six um, techniques. We're heading on to number four. Uh, give your client your undivided attention. Give your client your undivided attention. Uh, there was a huge poll done several years ago by the National Association of Realtors in the States. And what they did was they, they actually um, interviewed Joe Public. So not agents. They, they interviewed people on the other end of the spectrum, the buyers and sellers of properties. And they asked them a very simple question. What do you want from an estate agent? And they collated all the results, and they came up with three things that are top of mind for every one of your clients, okay? And here they are. Number one, top of the list. They said, we want our agent's undivided attention. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, that should tell you something about what the average buyer and seller of property thinks about estate agents that they are distracted, that they aren't actually listening to me. They, that's what people feel. So undivided attention. And then just for your interest, the other two were someone who understands their needs, right? That's why I spent 40 minutes on the first principle. Ask questions, listen, feedback. That's why. Number two was they want someone who understands them. And then number three is they want a salesperson they can trust and uh Incidentally, that is the biggest benefit of working by referral, is that when you've been referred to Mrs. Edwards, a potential seller, 
When you call her to make the appointment, she has already heard nice things about you and she is expecting the phone call from, and hopefully you've had one of those before, as opposed to knocking on someone's door. There is a level of trust she already has in you because her friend has spoken highly of you. That is one of the, the most important reasons to work by referral. It makes the process so much easier. <clears throat> okay. So back to point number one, undivided attention. Um, there are really two categories in which I want you to think about this. Um, giving people your undivided attention when you um, are not with your clients, and you're not physically with them, and then when you are physically with them. Okay, so let's just think about those two separately. When you're not with your clients, you must maintain contact with them. You know, if, if, you, if they try to get hold of you, if they leave a message, if they send you an email, You've got to get back to them sharply. They have got to feel that you are responsive even when you're not with them physically. You, they can't feel like, man, this person has just disappeared. Okay, that's actually what we're going to talk about in, in, in technique number six today. But under technique number four, it's that other one. And this is the one we don't speak enough about, is giving your clients your undivided attention when you are physically with them. Now, in the chat roll, you tell me, what is the biggest enemy of giving your clients your undivided attention when you are physically with them? Can you guess? What is the thing that is going to tempt you to be distracted most often when you are with a client physically? And I know you all know what I'm going to be talking about here, and that is your cell phone. Okay, your cell phone. When you are with clients physically, I'm going to strongly suggest to you that you switch your phone off or at least put it onto silent when you're with a client. But just be careful with putting it onto silent because these days, you know, ladies love wearing tight-fitting pants and men also, we've got these skinny, skinny like chinos, like this pair of chinos here. And when you're talking to someone and your cell phone is in your pocket, okay, it's quite tight there. Most people, even when it's on silent, their phone vibrates, right? I can't stand it. When I'm talking to someone and I can see they're trying really hard to focus on me, and, I, and their whole leg, <laughs> their leg is vibrating, and I can hear it, Zzz, and they, there's like electric shock going through their body, and they're trying to focus on you, and you know they're not concentrating. So that, that's why I say just be careful with putting your phone on silent. It can communicate the wrong thing. Your clients must know when you're with them, you are with them. You know, you, you're not making a few bucks selling widgets, like in some corner cafe. Like that's your industry, you guys make an enormous amount of money on a single transaction. And given how important that transaction is for people, don't you agree that you have absolutely no right to ask them to wait while you take a phone call or you check a WhatsApp message or you check your email or, 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 or something like that? Okay? You have to. Really be careful of your cell phone when you're with people. Okay, and then here's the other thing with giving people your undivided attention when you're with them is maintain eye contact when you're speaking to them. Okay, now don't overdo that. Because <laughs> that can get a little weird, you know. You give them the death stare. Okay. So just be careful with the eye contact thing. But honestly, you know what it's like when you're speaking to someone and... Uh, and, and they're kind of almost like they're being followed by the FBI. You're talking to them and they're, you know, they're doing this the whole time. You're talking to them and, and they're looking over your shoulder and they're like, it's so disconcerting. When you're with your clients, be with them. Give them your attention. Look them in the eye. Listen to them actively. Okay. You know, that's a small thing, Gus, but it makes a huge impression with people when you're working with them. Right. Let's move on to service excellence technique number Five, which is keep the experience pleasant at all times. In your workbook, here's the little uh, block. It says, no matter how good you are at your work, the process must be pleasant for the client. You know, it seems that only kind of scientists and maybe school teachers can get away with being rude to their clients. You know, maybe software engineers too. The point is not so much that um, people are not going to list their home with you. Okay. The problem is that when the transaction is finished, even if you were really good at what you did technically, if you were unpleasant to deal with, 
they are not going to refer you to their family and friends. Okay, so just remember the first little slide on the on the board behind me. We, we said you were going to transition people from knowing you to liking you to trusting you. Well, don't don't overlook that middle one. People have to like you. So let me ask you this question: Do people like you when they deal with you? Do people like you? Do your clients like you? Are you a fun and enjoyable person to be around? Or, um, you know, without being a joker, it's not what I'm talking about, but are you, are you lighthearted? Are you enjoyable to be with? Do you take an interest in them? Or are you a bit kind of impatient with people, which, which we, in our industry, we can be, because there's all sorts of other pressure, okay? Can you, are you a little passive aggressive when you don't get your way? <clears throat> um, you know, the, the temptation is always to have our eyes on the money and not on the relationship in real estate. And of course, the irony is that if you look after your relationships in real estate for 10, 15, 20 years, you will make more money than most agents. And you'll enjoy yourself too, because you will work with people who enjoy working with you and who know, like, and trust you. So there's a little rating, little sheet in your workbook there. And what I want you to do is give yourself a number out of 10. You don't have time to think about it. I want you to just first number that comes to mind, be honest with yourself, okay? One is I'm really bad at this, 10 is I'm, I'm good at it, okay? So, number one, give yourself a number out from one to 10. I never lose my temper in front of a client. Never lose my temper. I, I always keep my cool. Does that describe you? I hope so. Okay, give yourself a number out of one to 10. And number two, I smile a lot, okay, without being weird. I smile a lot. People, you know, nobody wants to deal with someone who never smiles. Um, on the whole, I'm patient with everyone. I'm, I'm generally patient. Um, I'm, I'm always polite. So, uh, gentlemen, I'm a bit old-fashioned when it comes to chivalry. Do you open the car door for your clients? Do you open, you know, the door of a home for, your, for, for, for female clients to let them go through first? And you know what old-fashioned chivalry also says? If a woman is going upstairs, and ladies, if this offends you, I'm sorry, but I'm old-fashioned. I think chivalry should still be allowed. A, a, a guy should walk behind the lady in case she trips over her high heels and topples back <laughs> on top of you. You can catch her. And same thing when you're going downstairs, you go down in front of her. You know, little things. How are your manners with clients? You know, all of these things make an impression on people. Um, how about this one? I always treat my clients with respect. I treat people with respect. Uh, I never interrupt my clients when they're talking. Woohoo! This is this is big for some of you guys because you've got fast moving minds and, and you've got ideas and you've got things that you want. And I tell you, the, the quickest way to lose someone's trust is to interrupt them. And for some clients, that's difficult because they ramble and they talk and they go on and on and on. But you know what? You get paid a lot of money. You must be patient with them. Don't interrupt people when they're talking. And then the last one, there's always humor in our relationships. You know, one of the, it's, it's amazing. Human beings are designed to respond to, to humor. And, and, and you know you've done your job when at the end of a transaction, there have been a few little private jokes that you guys can kind of look each other across the room when somebody says something or you see something where you both have a little giggle together. That's really powerful when it comes to making friends, you know, making friends with people. Uh, earning trust. Okay, so that was number five. Number six, we're moving on to the final one. We've made good progress, is maintaining constant communication throughout the transaction. Um, this one's pretty simple. There is only one way to make sure your client feels at ease throughout your transaction together, and that is constant communication. Constant communication. Okay, I think that little block is in your workbook there. Constant communication. <clears throat> We've got to remember that our clients don't buy and sell homes for a living, okay? A lot of the time, they are clueless about suspensive conditions and when they are, like, um, fulfilled and when they're not and bond stipulations and the transfer process and legal documents and deeds of sale and, you know, all the wonderful things that you seem to spend your life sorting out. You know, for, for them... This process is a little scary. It's their most expensive asset in the world. 
Um, it's the, the process is filled with unanswered questions, and they need you to be cons constantly reassuring them. They need you to be updating them on the process, encouraging them that all is well, everything's fine, it's all going well. You just need to keep in touch with people and keep their fears allayed. And in South Africa, and I'm sorry to say this, guys, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for over 15 years. I've trained tens of thousands of agents. We've coached one-on-one -on -one hundreds of, of South Africa's best agents. And I can tell you this is categorical fact. In South Africa, estate agents are infamous for dropping off the face of the earth after the signed offer to purchase gets sent off to the conveyancing attorney. But that is the most critical time of the transaction to be keeping in touch because your client is, is unsure. They don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And I know what you're thinking. Our attorney sends SMSs. They get like a daily or a weekly SMS from the attorney keeping up to that. But can I tell you what? Half the time they don't know what that SMS means. When the SMS goes out, you need to follow that up with a phone call or an email just saying, hey, I know you got the SMS about the transfer or the thing's been, the deed has been lodged or whatever. Here's what that means. Things are still going well. Great. I'll speak to you next week. Just keep in touch with people. This is how you keep yourself moving along the no like trust continuum with them. Okay. So here's my recommendation to you is that you, and this is in your workbook, missing word, diarize a weekly phone call to all current clients. Diarize. So you have it as a recurring appointment in your diary where you don't do any, you don't book appointments in that time or whatever. You know that between whatever it is, 8 and 9 or 8 and 8.30, it won't even take you that long. On a Friday morning, what I do is I phone my, all my current clients who are in the midst of a transaction and I just give them feedback. That's what I do on a Friday morning between 8 and 9. And then you can even tell your clients in advance, you're going to get a weekly phone call or email from me keeping you updated. And then you obviously keep to that commitment. Guys, these are all little techniques, but they are incredibly powerful for earning people's trust, which is what all of today was about. Okay. Uh, now, uh, in your workbook, Apple Tree. <clears throat> Apple tree diagram. I don't have a copy of the apple tree, yes, I can't show it to you in my manual. But if you uh, printed out that workbook, um, I've got a little analogy that I use for my referral system. What I wanted, so we've spent the whole hour and a bit now speaking about the service excellence techniques that in the middle of the transaction techniques, now what I want to do is just give you some insight into what that, that keep in touch system looks long term. And I use this apple tree as, a, as an analogy, as a diagram, which I use to represent my referral system. So I want you to have that apple tree in front of you. And I'm going to help, help you. I'm just going to fill in some of the missing words on the apple tree. Uh, if somebody here could get that apple tree in front of me, it would actually, actually yeah, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So in the, in the middle of your diagram, there's, a, there's an apple tree. And hanging from the apple tree are two apples, okay? What are the apples? What are we trying to generate long term? So the, the transaction is now finished with Mrs. Edwards. We are now keeping in touch with her long term, building a long term relationship. What are the two things we're wanting to harvest from that relationship? And they are lead sources. The first one is repeat business. That's why we want to earn Mrs. Edwards' trust is so that she will feel like she can use us again in five years time when she sells her home. So repeat business. And then the second apple is referral business. So repeats and referrals, those are the two apples. Those are the two things we're trying to harvest from our tree. Now, what is the tree? Well, obviously you get apples from apple trees, right? No rocket science there. A little bit more rocket science here. Where do you get repeat and referral business from? And some of you are thinking, well, past clients? Yeah, past clients, of course. Repeat business especially is past clients. But where do you get referrals from? One of the things I'm going to teach you on the Successful Real Estate Agent Seminar is what the five most fruitful sources of referrals are. We know that there are five specific groups of people who are red hot for referrals. And obviously, we suggest that you build your database, you make your database up from those five groups of people. So fill in on your apple tree. The apple tree represents your database. Okay, so that's what you put in for the apple tree. And from your database, you're going to be harvesting repeat and referral business. 
Now, in order to get your apple tree to be responsive, in order to get nice apples from your apple tree, your apple tree has to be fed, right? So on the one side of your apple tree, you're going to see sunlight. On the other side, you're going to see rainfall. Sunlight and rainfall, that's what makes a healthy apple tree, right? So database, how do you get a database to be responsive? Because many of you have got a database it's sitting in an Excel spreadsheet on your computer. Some of you got like 3,000 names. But you know what? That's not a responsive database. Okay. There's some, there's some tips and techniques and secrets around that. You need to maintain contact with that do database, and it needs to be the right size. So I'm going to give something away for free here. Your database needs to be, this might shock some of you, no more than 100 people. Okay? And I call those people your advocates. My system is designed to get you keeping in touch with 100 high-quality people and getting over time, it won't happen immediately, over time you begin to harvest, 80% of your deals will come from those 100 people. And I'm going to show you later as we close today why that works, and it does work. Right, how do you maintain contact? I think, if I remember correctly, this, the left is the sunshine. Sunshine is written communication. So we're going to send them stuff. On the Successful Real Estate Agent Seminar, I'm going to teach you what to send them. There are six written communication techniques that we know create a responsive database. There's six of them, okay? The heading is written communication. But that's not enough. You can't just send people stuff. You've got to follow that up with personal contact, right? So on the right-hand side, you've got the rainfall. What is that? That is personal contact. And under there, there are three types. One of them has three subsets of personal contact systems that I will teach you on the Successful Real Estate Agent Seminar. Okay, that's the short version. You've got a database of 100 people. You are having multiple touch types with those people, sending them different kinds of written communication things. So handwritten notes is one of the six. We spoke about that today. Personal contact. There's different types of personal contact that you have. You've got the system of keeping in touch, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to teach you what the regularity of that system looks like. Then you've got that little dude walking up his ladder, right, going into the tree. That dude represents, well, think about it. Apples don't just fall out of the tree and come to the farmer themselves. He's, no matter how healthy that tree is, he's got to go and get those apples. Same is true in working by referral. If you want referral business, you have to go and get the referrals from your database. How do you do that? So the little dude going up his tree represents dialogues, dialogues, scripts and dialogues. Now, I'm not going to turn you into the really bad call center guy who phones you at 8 o'clock at night as you've just sat down for dinner, and you can tell in the first five seconds that this guy's reading something on the other end of the phone. Have you had that experience? I mean, I absolutely hate that. I'm not going to turn you into that. That's not what we're talking about. But we are talking about reshaping some of your language in key moments. There's six major dialogues I'm going to teach you that you use in key moments in your business, that we know if you will say certain things at the right time, it sends your, your uh, referral stream through the roof. There are just some things we want to get, get you saying at the right time. And I mean, you know that. When you're giving a, a listing presentation, I'm sure there's things that you, you hear yourself saying every time you give a listing presentation because you know they work. They're good things. Right. We're going to teach you some dialogues to work with... Um, with the referral system, with your database. Okay, then bottom right-hand corner, if I remember correctly, there is the service excellence thing. Uh, there's a fragile container. Yes, okay, thank you. Great, got it. So it looks like that. That's what you should be looking at. Okay, that's what the apple tree looks like. So I'm not going to talk about this service excellence thing here. If you ever done try to do this backwards, it's impossible. So the service excellence thing is what we did today, that fragile container is these six things that I taught you today. And then on the left-hand side, there's a little trailer there. Just put the word leverage in there. That's le we'll do that on the Successful Real Estate Agent Seminar as well. We talk about leverage, leveraging your business. Okay, that is the apple tree. That's basically all I wanted to do on that. And then I am going to finish. I've got about 10 minutes left. I'm going to finish, and then I'm going to hand over to Greg, who's just going to greet you, and they're going to say a word or two about the Facebook page. Um, what I want to talk about is critical mass, okay? What is critical mass? Well, uh, critical mass was originally a scientific term uh, where something is ready to explode, okay? 
it has now reached critical mass. Then the marketing fraternity, they took this thing of critical mass. They said, man, that is a cool idea. We're going to apply that to a marketing thing, whatever. So anyway, in the end, what they did was they said, well, when you have a certain brand of a product and, and it gets associated with, with the whole industry so that we don't even talk about this thing as its generic industry name anymore. We just refer to it by that one brand name. That brand has now achieved critical mass in marketing terms. So you don't talk about uh, property portals now, okay? You talk about private property, okay? These guys are on their way to having critical mass, and it's through brilliant marketing. Other companies that you'll know of, um, like you don't vacuum a floor. You, you hoover a floor. You don't do an internet search. You Google something. Now, what my system is designed to do is it, it is designed to create critical mass for you in your business, especially with these 100 people. So you've got 100 advocates. You are implementing a scientific keep in touch system where you're building a relationship with those people long term, and I will teach you exactly how to do that on the seminar, okay? You do that. You are going to eventually get these 100 people to a point where when they hear the word buy, sell, home, house, real estate, property, the first thing that they think of involuntarily is you. Okay? That's what I'm talking about, critical mass. And that's what my system is designed to do. Now, question. What is the power of that? Why on earth do we want to give, you know, 100 people, get them to critical mass? I mean, how much business can you really do from 100 people? You're going to be shocked. Okay, I'm going to show you, show you the numbers. A number of years ago, the Gallup organization, okay, Gallup is not the thing you do on a horse. Okay? It's, they do statistical surveys and studies. They're an international market research company. They did a study on how many people the average person knows in the sense of, I'm walking down the street and I bump into Dave. I don't know Dave well, but I know him enough that we would stop and have polite conversation. Hey, Dave, nice to see you again. How are you? Oh, we're busy selling our house. Really? We're also selling our house. What agents are you using? And then there's a chance for a referral. Okay? So how many people are in the average person's life that fit into that category? Answer, Gallup poll, 285 people. Now, if you build critical mass with 100 advocates, where they think of you when they think of property. And each of those people can influence 285 people. How many people does that give you access to by first generation referral only? 100 times 285, just take those two, scoot them down there, 28,500 people. That is absolutely phenomenal. You've built close relationships with 100 people, and you are using certain predefined dialogues regularly. Okay? You have to be priming these people with dialogues. If you do that correctly, you will get access to 28,500 people. Now, how often does the average person move? Okay? So every person moves, I've heard every three years, I've heard every 10 years. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with five that makes the maths a bit easier. Let's say the average person moves every five years. 28,500 people moving every five years, you've got 5,700 people that are going to be moving in the next 12 months, right? That you can get referred to through just 100 people. So my question to you is, how many of those 5,700 transactions in the next 12 months do you need to make you happy? And some of you are going to be like, I want all of them, and you can't have all of them. Sorry, okay, because it will kill you. So let's just take a percentage of those. If, let's say you only get referred to one in ten of those. Well, that would be five, seven. Okay, you're not going to do 570 transactions. That'll also kill you. So let's just do one percent. So, so you just get referred to one out of a hundred of the potential referrals you can from your hundred advocates. You're going to do 57 transactions in the next 12 months by referral. Okay? It doesn't stop there. Remember, there's two types of apples. There's repeat business and referral business. One of the little testimonials that you read in your workbook is by a lady called Carla Krill, one of our clients in, in Johannesburg, and she gave a testimonial in about July of that year saying she had already sold 10 of her advocates' properties, and that was not counting any of the referrals that she was getting. So, and that actually works with our numbers because 10 over six months would be 20 over a year, and that's the same. 
100 advocates moving every five years is 20 deals on repeat business. So you add that together, you're getting 77 transactions in a year, right? You know the beauty about that, guys? I'm not saying don't do the door knocking and the cold calling and the canvassing. You can do that stuff. But you have a database of 100 people who are, you've got critical mass with. You will do 77 deals at a very concern, and I've got experience in this, okay? That's conservative. 77 deals. You have not knocked on one door. You've dropped no flyers. You haven't done any geographic farming. You've done no cold calling. All you've done is you've earned people's trust. You've built relationships. So guys, I'm unashamed about this thing. I believe real estate is a relationship-driven game, and yet so few estate agents have got a system to build relationships. And that's the key here. If you want to build relationships with 100 people, I'm telling you now, guys, you're going to need a system. You, you, you can't do that on memory and on good intentions because you can't remember what, you know, I can't remember what my wife told me over dinner last night. Like, you're not going to remember what 100 people are, are doing and saying, and you're going to need a system. Now, that is why I encourage you to invest in yourself, invest in your business, and purchase the successful real estate agent course, which I'm going to talk about now. This thing sits squarely in the strategy for success for your business. And for those of you who know me, I give a 30-day no money. Uh, <laughs> I give a 30-day no money back guarantee. No, I give a 30-day no questions asked money back guarantee on all my online courses. You can buy the course if you don't like it. You send me an email. I will not ask any questions. I will simply refund you. Okay? Because I believe in what I do. The system works. But you have to invest in yourself, and I'm going to encourage you to do that. So, um, this is tricky without the slides. I'm just going to have to, you have to just concentrate now because there's a whole bunch of things to remember. When you purchase the successful real estate agent course, that costs 6,500 Rand. Then there are two other courses which are going in a bundle today, <clears throat> which thanks to private property we, we're reducing the cost of. There's a course called the Profitable B List. That teaches you how not only to work with your advocates, that's a successful real estate agent course, but how to work with a bigger B list behind that advocate strategy, how to set up a newsletter and, and what the content of that newsletter needs to be and how to set up automatically triggered messages, a series of drip fed messages. I've got a whole strategy that I teach you to use with a big database so that you're keeping in touch with your 100 advocates using my primary strategy, but then behind that, You've got this electronic strategy that's keeping in touch with maybe a 1,000 people, and you will get business from that B list. So that's another course where I teach that, and that's going in for about 1,420 grand, I think it is. And then there's another course on, um, okay, let it be a surprise. It'll be in the bundle that you purchased today. So the bundle comes to 9,500 rand. It's specially being put together. How do you purchase that? There is a link that is going to be put in the chat roll. I'm going to put it in, and, I'm, and, and I think Sia is going to put it in as well. Is, is it in? Okay, great. So there's a, there's a little checkout. When you uh, click this page, it's going to take you to a checkout page on your, on your screen, and that's going to be so – what that is, sorry, is a discount. I almost forgot to tell you about the discount. So for those of you who register while you're on the live webinar today, uh, you're not going to pay the nine and a half thousand rand. I'm giving like a sixty percent discount, and it comes down to three eight five zero, right? And that's for today only. And you can say a huge thank you to Private Property for for brokering that for you. So click that button; it'll take you to the discounted checkout page, and then it'll take you through the process once you put your credit card details in. I trust that many of you will invest in that. Take me up on this opportunity, guys. You're not going to get this opportunity uh, again anytime soon, and it's a really good deal. So. Uh, I trust that there's been enough value in, in today for, for me to earn your trust to do that. Okay, I think that's me. Um, I'm going to say uh, goodbye to you. I want to just thank you guys as Greg is making his way over to the to the table to, to greet you. I want to say thank you so much, guys, for your patience. I know at the beginning of the webinar we had some technology hitches, but thank you so much for persisting through with us, logging back in on the Facebook page, and I trust that you got value from 
the time that we spent together. So God bless you. And for those of you who do decide to click on that link and buy my course, I'll see you on the other side. So thanks very much. Great. Over to you. Down for the mark. Yeah, I'm going to take it off and give it to you. No, I think it's under. Everyone, thanks so much for spending some time today with us, and thanks for your patience when we had a little technical glitch earlier. The video, we will stitch the two little videos together and have it up on the Agent Connect page for you, so you're going to be able to watch the whole thing from start to finish if you want to reference it, or if you missed any part of it, or anything like that. Um, just one or two other points. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, but we've got a like our page 10,000 Rand in Your Hand competition, so... Um, if you want to go on to Facebook, uh, go on to the Agent Connect page and make sure that you like the page. Uh, I always get confused and like posts, but actually you need to like the page itself. And one agent at the end of the year is going to get 10 grand in their hand just for doing that. The whole idea of Agent Connect for private property was literally just to give you guys some value. Um, we are such in such a privileged position as private property. We get to see the whole industry. We get to see the whole market. And that's something that we think comes with a bit of responsibility. And we take it very seriously, try and give something back to the industry wherever we can and try and help you guys um, give, a better, give a better service offering to the end consumers, which, of course, we're all trying to do. Then I would also ask if you have the time and the patience for it, um, give us some feedback. We really, really are interested. We often post surveys and what have you onto the page, but even just in the comments, we read them all. We, we reply to nearly everything, even if it's not a question. So give us a little bit of feedback. We'd really like to hear from you. Uh, it makes a big difference in shaping the kind of uh, content that we show up. And then as a last point, I just want to say thank you to Steve. I think he did a really great job again, uh, even with the technology being a little bit 50-50 and us having to work around it, but we are learning. Uh, and I think the industry owes it to people like Steve who really do take the time and energy to put really useful courses together to try and empower everyone. Uh, and I really, this is something that's so in line with our values as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, we will be doing another webinar in another month. Um, you'll have to wait and see who that's going to be. At the moment, we have um, two great speakers that both want to come and chat. And we're going to have to work out who's going first. Um, and I hope that's going to be beneficial for you, and I hope these things sort of run smoother every time we do them. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate you all being here. Cheers.